Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to cover adaptive mesh refinement, also known as AMR, in OpenFoam. I'm going to show you how to modify the dam break case to adaptively refine the mesh in the areas of interest. In this case, it'll refine the mesh in the interface sections between the water and the air, as you can see in this image. As you can see with adaptive mesh refinement, the results do change quite a bit compared to the results of having a um, uniform mesh, even more so than when you refine that uniform mesh. Okay, let's jump straight into it. So the first step is to navigate to the dam break case. And then open up the Explorer to manage files. As you can see, I have a few additional files in here. This AMR underscore video file is just a copy of the original dam break case. As you can see, I've already run this, so I have some time steps in here. But that case is just a copy of this. So, as you can see, I just have the constants folder, the system folder, and the zero original folder. The one thing I'm going to add to this is this dynamic mesh dictionary file. This is what will control the refinement. You can just add this to your constant folder. Okay, now just to run the case, you navigate to the appropriate folder. So in my case, the AMR video. And one last thing is you have to copy this file. The zero dot original file just keeps a original file of the zero folder, which you copy every time you run it, because when you set the fields, as you will see in a few seconds, it will change the files within the initial case. So if you ever want to run it again using a couple different parameters, you always want to keep this original file unmodified. So just rename that to your zero folder. Okay, now we're just going to create a basic block mesh. All this already comes preloaded in the file. Now we use the set fields command. And I'm just going to pull up pair view to make sure my mesh is looking good right after I make a results file. Just to double check that everything's in here. Here we've got our results file. We've got our poly mesh as expected. And we should be able to open up that file. I'm just going to navigate to the appropriate file, open it, and apply. Uncheck skip zero time so we can check the set fields. All I like to do is surface and navigate to zero. As you can see, the, um, the field has been set. This is the water in this case. Now to run this case, we just do enter phone command as usual, and it will run. I'm just going to stop the, um, the case here because I, I've already ran it before. But as you can see, time steps have begun to load. And if we pull up pair view, we should be able to see those. And we should also be able to see the mesh refining. So let me just check that. And yep, the mesh is looking good. It's refining, as you can see, at, at the boundary location. As always, make sure to open up every single file in the, in the folders. Check all all the folders, play around, see how the results change. For a few pointers on this file in particular, a few parameters in here are the refinement interval. This just specifies how often you want the mesh to be refined. So I'm refining it at every time step. 
the field over which it's refining is the water. So those are refining at the um, at the boundary between the water and the air, as you can see. You've got some refinement levels, some unrefinement levels, some number of buffer layers, max refinement. So ours is three. So if you go into pair view, there should be a um, parameter here for a refinement level. Yep, cell level, here it is. And as you can see, we are indeed refining it up to level three. Your maximum cells is just the maximum number of cells you're specifying in your mesh to have. Dump level, this is kind of an interesting parameter. It's probably not quite clear what it does, but all it does basically is output the cell level as a scalar field. So then you can plot it in um, pair view as I just showed. So with that um, parameter set to false, you wouldn't be able to see the um, cell level as I just demonstrated. So a few notes on adaptive mesh refinement. It's probably not the smartest thing to do in this case, because a lot of the time that you save by having a less refined mesh in the areas where you're not interested in is you lose a lot of that time because at each time step, a lot of calculation time goes into refining the mesh. So if you just had a finer mesh throughout, say imagine, so our mesh is around 50,000 cells. So let's say we had to have 100, 200,000 cells. The time you could say by parallelizing that calculation, along with the fact that you don't have to refine, so there's not that extra calculation, it probably makes sense to just run the finer mesh. But once you get into bigger cases with large domains and areas where you really want to refine down the mesh, it makes sense to apply these adaptive mesh refinements. In the future, I'll do this on a more complicated case where those benefits really become more apparent. And I'll quantify through some mesh refinement studies the time benefits and compare those to the result quality and compare that to having just finer uniform meshes. And also we'll compare having finer uniform meshes, mesh refinement areas, adaptive meshes, and we'll see. All these techniques have a part, and for me personally, adaptive mesh is an area where it's really exciting, but it's not always the best. You do tend to drive down drastically your CFD calculation times, but as something that a beginner normally doesn't think about is total execution time. These adaptive cases are harder to implement on parallel processors because the mesh is shifting each time, so it's hard to decompose the case because say you decompose the case into just four areas initially where you have a uniform mesh. Well, as this case is running, you can see that you approach 90% of your cells on one processor. So it's approaching a serial case if you don't redistribute those cells appropriately. So you have to take into account if you're parallelizing the redistribution process, remeshing at every time step, and just the greater complexity of setting up the case. But the benefits are possibly quite drastic. In particular cases, you can get extremely high quality results equivalent to having very fine meshes throughout with much fewer cells. Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was pretty quick, but it's just modifying a pre-existing case. So we didn't have to deal with any of the case files. We didn't have to calculate any of the initial conditions or anything like that. The next video will probably be also be adaptive mesh refinement, but it'll be a more typical video where I go through and define geometries. I'm considering quite a few cases. I'm definitely thinking about doing refinement meshes based on velocity fields. So refining on the areas where you have greater velocity changes or turbulence to try to capture some of those smaller vertical structures. This dam break case also has gotten me interested in the um, set fields directory. So I might do a case with water drops or there are also other things to look into like you can have Raleigh Taylor instabilities. I'm also considering Kelvin Helmholtz instabilities to play around a bit more with the set fields velocity profiles, but there's a lot more to come. Those will likely also be paired with adaptive mesh refinement. You'll see on this channel as my videos progress, my skill set is also progressing. So I'll be coupling some of these previously acquired skills. I haven't done a video yet on CF mesh, but I've also been working on that. You'll see the quality of the videos is slowly increasing as my um, skill set increases. I put a lot of time recently into pr improve my pre-processing skills, and I think they'll pay off, especially as I go further into CFD and start to couple these techniques into more complex problems. I think it's really important to have those basic pre-processing skills really flushed out in order to advance to the next level. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, I'll do my best to try to respond to all of them. Thank you for watching.